Hey. Hey, Glenn, did you find any eggs? Yeah, four. Four? One broken and half eaten. By what? Probably a chicken eating a frozen egg. Oh, they do that? I didn't know they did that. Well, if it freezes, it breaks open. And chickens will always collect broken eggs. They even eat the shell. Oh, wow. But if they know, they know, like, if it's not broken, that it's important, right? Yeah. If it's not broken, it stays there, and different chickens will go and lay at the same place. So you can find uh, uh, a number of eggs at the same place on the same day, even though you picked up the ones the day before. That's because more than one chicken has decided that life should continue where most chickens go, and they can take turns sitting on the nest. How many eggs do you think a chicken usually lays in its life? Well, from my experience, uh, I would say that uh, most chickens would lay about five eggs a week so with two days off because it's it's uh, one egg a day type of thing. But each chicken, if you have uh, 10, 12 chickens, you're going to be picking up somewhere around seven to eight eggs on an average every day. And they're not coming from the same ones. Now, like... Overlap. The, the rooster, right? Like, it's... It can just be like one rooster, and it will go around uh, fertilizing all the other. Chickens. Well, they can't fertilize here because there's no rooster. Yeah, I know, but like, if it, if you had one, would it do every single chicken on the property? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. It would also attack anything that comes close, including human beings. Why is that? Well, it's their harem. Right? Ah. Yeah. It's the uh, um, what, it's um, harem of the chicken coop. <laughs> they um, I I saw elks do something similar. I I haven't read anything about them, or I haven't seen. I'm not around elks, but I haven't read anything about them attacking people, but. They have like a similar style. Yeah. I guess that's why they call it. <clears throat> why they name the the last certain lodges after these animals, probably for genetic engineering. But um. But yeah, that 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 painting. Tell me what it means to you. To me. <laughs> well, um. Look at it here. Being well, I already spoke a little bit about it with Jennifer. Something I know it's something to do with uh, uh, something dripping or leaking, the Milky Way or something. Mm-hmm. And the cat. Well, that's what the title is. So the cat, the Leakio cats, Cielico. Is that a is that a word? Yeah, Ciel is the French word for heaven, Uh and then it continues into uh, a word that you could make leak out of. So they're getting leaks of stuff out of heaven. C 
Fialical. They are a group of cats that have a special role to play on the farm here. Once they mature and reach a quantity equal to about 100. And 100 can be used to replace one with an L, lowercase l, which makes it the loo. So it's about the loo at the Sioux. Their job involves doing something. Cats are the most um, difficult animal to herd. As a matter of fact, the leader of the U.S. Senate once compared them to senators. <laughs> they uh, each are of their own mind. In this case, the uh, position of the uh, of Ursa Major, the Big Dipper, um, suggests that they're talking about late July, beginning of August, but probably more late July. You know, the Big Dipper orbits around the pole. And as it orbits, it also turns. And what you see when you look up in the sky can also give you the time of the year you're in, depending on whether it's pouring, kind of showing itself emptying, or as it turns around up side, uh, it's the position of receiving. This particular uh, position shown in the picture would suggest a time between July and September, more than likely the end of July or thereabouts. These cats that are going to be in a number of approximately 100 will, in fact, herd people who are destined to travel to the fifth dimension, or if you want, in in our people's terms on earth is uh, heaven. The fifth dimension has um, the possibility of giving earthlings a new start after having screwed up completely and beyond repair the existing four-dimensional universe. Four-dimensional universe because each preceding universe, of which there are 26, and this is the fourth, had one dimension added to it at every universe along the way. So we start in the first universe in one dimension, go to the second universe in two dimension, 
third universe, three dimension, and the one we're living in now is with the addition of time, a fourth dimension. The next universe, which will be occupied by the disentanglement of the helix of the dead to date, which number approximately 7 billion people have lived and died with another 7 billion people now walking the face of the earth, give or take a few million. And the cats, along with a group of people leaving the farm, will basically herd humans into the fifth dimension. So these cats will join humans who have lived and died and cats who were born and died on the farm led by these 100 living cats on the day it happens and that of course will be the next journey as the world as we know it is brought to an end. The world as we know it is the end product of bureaucratic control. Bureaucrats took power in 1789 and decapitated their leaders. I'm sure you've noticed there's been a lot of talk in the media about decapitation as something that is occurring fairly uh, often these days thinking in terms not of the method used by the French uh, in 1789, but manually by people who appear on a video showing them decapitating people in Iraq and Syria. Afghanistan, Pakistan, that general area known as Persia at one time. The bureaucrats are, as everyone in the world alive today, are products of genetic modification. Most of that mo uh, genetic modification in the last 3,000 years has occurred in the Balkans or in Syria. by using the DNA of um, 
known individuals and mix and matching that DNA and replacing the contents of a female egg with a new recipe, the genetic engineers have been able to manufacture gene pools that will be useful to their end times plan for a period of time until their shelf life usefulness has expired. If you think about it in terms of the education we got in school, uh, think of Adam and Eve beginning the manufacturing of a gene pool. Cain being manufactured as a builder. Abel being manufactured as someone who will take refuge and hide and operate from a position of unknown. And as the gene pools are used, a tweaking process exists with the offspring so that the offspring of the original will improve on the knowledge and ability of their own offspring, which may or may not be direct offspring because what they work on is four generations. So it could be your great-grandmother having an effect on who you are today as much as it could be your grandmother or your mother having the desired effect. But in the last 3,000 years, they needed at least 12 different offsprings, different gene pools, and they called them tribes. And each one was assigned a different task based upon the genetic material that was used from a person who had lived and died. At one stage of the game, it was basically monarchs that were being made because they would then have control over a um, larger group of people, usually about 2,000, and could add to the genetic engineering a certain amount of social and political engineering. Hang on a second. Okay. Are you there? Yes. So, every time they tweak the recipe, they s slightly improve about, upon the quality of the task at hand for each gene pool. And they tweak it not knowing exactly what is the best outcome and usually go past the point of what they were looking for. And at that point, they have to stop 
the tweaking designed to improve and start tweaking in the context of returning back towards the center point where they began, hoping to find the best place possible. Unfortunately, that leads to them going past the point that they consider best and have to again reverse the process. If you look at the context that Noah's Ark is a story written in the year 2900 BC. Therefore, 4,900 years ago. And what it demonstrates is at one stage of the game, having realized that they had gone too far in returning and where they had turned backwards from was more in line with what they had wanted. They now had a gene pool of humans they had created over approximately five to six hundred years that they had no use for. And therefore, their remedy was a flood. Kill the ones you made because you don't have time to go through the entire process again and start with a few that are in line with what you used to have and what you want next and start making them back again to take the gene pool back in that direction. And therefore, we learn about a modus operandi War, pestilence, famine, disease, floods, hurricanes, many means by which one can kill people, including revolution. And getting back to what they wanted, eventually repeating the process a number of times. In 1789, it was decided by the bureaucracy that worked for monarchs to kill them unless they agreed to a new system called democracy. And that system meant that bureaucrats, not monarchs, would run the world. Bureaucrats have now, in this century, outlived their purpose. Bureaucracies begin at a country's border. Includes, after the border guards, immigration. And after immigration, police and criminals. Those are the main players in a bureaucracy. 
border guards, immigration, including refugees. and police. Their work is internal within the boundaries of the country in which they operate. And of course, recently we've been told by uh, the border guards that they, not the politicians, control Canada. That what they say and what they do does not require anyone else's permission. That they are the bureaucrats with a responsibility equal to a monarch. Now, what seems to be happening is they themselves these border guards and policemen and immigration people have outlived their usefulness and are to be replaced with new border guards, new immigration people, new income tax people, because It's the income tax that pays and controls all of these groups. New police, federal and local, because they have presented themselves to be above and beyond the rule of law, and especially beyond the control of their own controllers. So the process began about five years ago in Syria where the president set up artillery and started shooting their big cannons into municipalities in Syria who were, in fact, responsible for making the existing bureaucrat line. Thus diminishing in great numbers the bureaucrats that now control day-to-day activity Lost you again. Yeah, it, it cut off when you were saying something about bureaucrats controlling the day-to-day activities. Yeah, Ma Bell doesn't like this story that I'm saying and often inter- interferes while I'm passing the message on. In any event, where where I was at, I was saying that In Syria, the president of the country turned his guns upon the known pool, gene pools, uh, made by genetic engineers in his country uh, for the purposes of making bureaucrats, and has so far killed about 400,000 of these people, while at the same time in other places made sure that less people of a different gene pool were uh, simply scared into running away. And that number is approximately 14 million people 
to date who are living in camps in uh, Lebanon and Turkey and uh, Jordan especially and are being uh, spoken to by the UN who then determine which gene pool they're from and if and when they should migrate to different countries and in what numbers. For example, Canada has agreed to take in 25,000 refugees sponsored by the government by the end of February. Their purpose here is to provide offspring who will be Canadian-born and will replace the existing gene pools currently employed as border security, immigration, including refugee, police, local and national. These children known as sleeper cells will grow into the replacement for the gene pool they want replaced within the next 25 years. Many of them will be used to replace great numbers of current bureaucrats whose position interferes with future plans. They are known as sleeper cells. So they grow up as Canadians and replace people on the border, the children of immigrants do that, or a cataclysmic activity is designed to take out a large number of these people that are border guards, especially, and policemen so that the immigrants can be used to replace those people in society already here who will take over their positions. The cataclysmic event planned for North America is, of course, known as the Lou at the Sioux. And what it does is it begins with a leak that is enhanced into a flood that then grows into a inland tsunami and liquefies much of the areas around the Great Lakes, the St. Lawrence River, the uh, states such as um, Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, including in Canada, the area of Toronto, Hamilton, London, 
California and a whole bunch of places on the Bruce Peninsula moving into the St. Lawrence Seaway, creating a situation where the Canadian feel will respond by rising in a physics concept called isostasy, as you well know. I was um, notified by the cell recently that there was something going on that the existing cats on the property had formed uh, what we call a catmobile, which is mobile positioning to receive information. And the suggestion was that a leak in the Big Dipper would occur as a sign of a leak in the Lou at the Sioux project. And that without giving a specific date, or year for that matter, they um, they showed the Big Dipper in a turnaround position, which can be attributed to the period in the year of late July to early September. Thus, the painting. Hmm. Well, yeah, I was telling um, Hawking and uh, Jennifer last night, like, I noticed um, in a lot of the symbolism, like the current movie, the film, that was very popular this year, and in the Rose Bowl parade, I kept seeing the sign of the bear. And, uh, you know, Jenny told me that that's, that's the sign for uh, Ursa Major, the Big Dipper. Uh, yeah. Although, uh, physically, it apparently doesn't m make much sense compared to the appearance of a bear today. <laughs> However, all of that could have been planned uh, any time after 24,000 B.C., and bears just may have been different, have a longer tail, for example, uh, in, in periods leading up to today than the short tails most bears have today. Very few of the images uh, in the sky have names that you could basically say, yeah, that's that's where it got its name because they they don't look like what the name would suggest. The only ones that do seem to be the Big Dipper and the Small Dipper, Ursa Minor and Ursa Major. Now, I have to remember that in the code, an A and an E are interchangeable. So the name Ursa really stands for ruse. Yeah. The ruse is a plan, a trick being pulled on people. And since it is connected to the media, and Medi being the original name of the country where media was born, um, 
had a capital by the name of Alem, and we know that there is a place on earth which is made up of those two words called je, which means I in French, je, ruse, ruse, alem. Hello. So the, the trick that is being played on us led by the media in support of their masters is about to take its planned course and Syrian immigration is the key. Since most Caucasians are of Syrian Middle Eastern descent, we have lived out our usefulness. I'll be back in a second. Okay. I'm back. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. So all of this is intertwined in the same manner as the uh, intertwining of our gene structure. The word is entangled. Quantum entanglement basically means that we have two parts to human beings. One part is for the creation of a walking person that can be socially and genetically engineered based on a genetically engineered program they had used to bring them to life. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other part is what one would call in their world a spirit. They use, of course, the word spirit in the same context as uh, alcohol and drugs are spirits they make you act in a way different than you would choose to act. And of course, in a human being, the way you act, the way an individual bureaucrat acts, is not uh, visible outwardly that changes have been made in them. And therefore, they look like you and me, but have a different role to play, which requires that some become hypocrites while others become control freaks and a third batch becomes criminal. And much of it is invisible to those people looking on the change in them is not apparent by how they speak or act or uh, walk 
in a manner, say, that scotch, gin, beer, wine changes a person, but remains visible, that change remains visible in the eyes of onlookers. It's very difficult to spot a control freak or a hypocrite or a crook. I'm getting a call from Jennifer, so I'll have to leave. You got me? Yeah, I heard you. Okay. Call later. Well, what time? Eight. All right. Yes, sir. Hey, Glenn. Oh, what's happening? Uh, it's me. I'm just getting ready to go to sleep in a little bit because I got to wake up. Make deliveries. Yeah. Yeah, I got a new job. I just started, uh, I guess, basically, I started last week. Uh, no, it's, I, I, I deliver nuts mm. in supermarkets. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not that bad. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's, um, I get to travel. <laughs> And I'm not stuck in one place all the time, so. You pick up the nuts and put them in your pocket and deliver that? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, the nuts that you can not put in your pocket are the ones at the warehouse. They have, like, a little rack. Whatever nuts you want. But I'm not. Uh, I can't live off. I don't work for peanuts. <laughs> I'm not trying to work for peanuts. Chicken feed. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'll be able to donate uh, some money because I, now I I have a job now that and they haven't fired me. So. Mm. Um. Jenny said something. I'm not. I guess she's not doing that PayPal thing. You know, she has. No. So I, I don't know how that's. I guess I could send money through you, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you have other people out there. I don't know if have, if anybody has bought the, the newspaper recently, because I've told a couple people about it. I haven't heard of anybody in a long time. Uh, right now, I'm talking to a guy, and uh, I, I made contact with him a couple times. A guy from uh, India, and he's uh, been interested in your material. He's always asking questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard of him. Yeah, he's. I guess, I don't know, he's, uh, maybe, a lot of people I find, they, they get, like, really, like, when it comes to talking to you, they get really shy, it might be shy, and they, they feel like they'd rather talk to me, I don't know why, I tell them, uh, yeah, you're probably better at answering, answering these questions, I don't know, I guess they get intimidated by, you know, But uh, it's hard for people to reach you, I guess, you know. Uh, uh, over the years, it's been hard to reach you. Mm-hmm. Because of uh, the situation. So I, I don't know. I forget exactly where we left off. I think you... Replacing bureaucrats, I think. Yeah, it was about you. Um, four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand killed on the spot in Syria. Kill on the spot, like at one time. And by cannon fire. Oh yeah, that yeah, that's crazy. A 
artillery. Can you imagine Barack Obama ordering the military to go, say, bomb Dallas or Mm -hmm. bomb Detroit? His public image is so, like, so clean. Like, they, they see... When I, because that's the thing with, I, I was talking about that with, with uh, Dana. Because the new thing about with the social media, it's like a, it's like a, it's a new advanced version of what the media used to be. Because now they have people more integrated into this media uh, stew, whatever you want to call it. And they, People are fooled thinking that like they're doing their own thinking or they don't realize they don't know who they're, who's on the other side of that computer screen. They don't realize that. They don't realize that the social media was just an excuse for like the news media people to hide behind. Yeah. There's like so many undercover media people and. Disappeared again. Yeah, it's, this is. Um, I have a feeling that I'm going to be dealing with that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I've been dealing with it since 1980. <laughs> 1986. The minute I said, "What the hell's going on in the world?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're like, you know what? He just woke up one day. He said, "I don't want the, I don't want the cheese. I just went out the maze. You can keep the cheese. I just went out this maze here." Yeah. Uh, well, they've been harassing and covering up by hanging up the phone ever since I first said, "Now." What is really going on in the world? Why do these things appear to be untrue? After all, they taught them to me in school. In any event, social media covers up and does the things that open media can't do. Exactly. It's so, it's so, it's clever, you know, it's very clever. They, you know, it's all undercover. It's, whenever I see like, a, they're, they're able to get an idea across so much more efficiently. You don't like that word, Syria. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, man! These guys don't like the thought that twelve tribes were fabricated with the help of Egyptians in a place that uses media's name. Maybe it, maybe it has to do with uh, the new your new uh, um, cabinet, the new cabinet you guys have. Well, I don't know what the new ones are like. All I know is that the ones, the old ones from the same party, have been given control of citizenship and immigration and border guards. Oh. So there's there's a couple of old names in an in the new party that are just carrying on the same type of bull. Have you noticed uh have you been watching the politics in um the US yeah they basically set up uh this guy 
Sanders, Bernie Sanders, and they kind of put him against uh, Hillary. Yeah. And I guess from how I see it, Trump is like the villain. He's the like the guy who gets all the attention and openly says things that you know he knows people will react to. And Bernie's supposed to be like the savior. And I don't like the the way his how his name sounds, but because there's a there's a slogan that people use. They say "Feel the burn." And when I think about it, burn Bernie Sanders, burning sand. I can only think of Blackwater, and when the coal the coal gets burnt. That's that's like the idea that the image that comes to my mind. And then you know, uh, sand is DNA. Yeah. Genetically engineered for the task. Yeah, they showed him. Uh, I saw pictures of him. They showed they showed pictures of him in the in the background with Martin Luther King. He was involved in I guess some way with Martin Luther King. Mm-hmm. I don't know. This this. Martin Luther King, you know, it's it's like it, 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 the guy was trained in like leftist ideology and philosophy, and I see that with uh, like the Black Panthers, right? Like with the halftime Super Bowl show, the mm-hmm. big singer, she Beyonce, she she did something with the Black Panthers, and you know the media is making a big thing about it. And I think about the Black Panthers; they were. They were trained in that 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 same thinking, that same leftist type of thinking, and 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 it makes me wonder why they call themselves Panthers uh, after the cast. You know, why would they call their organization that? Yeah. What points did they have in all of this? I don't know. Watch it on. It's funny in the rows. You still there? Yeah. Oh, it's funny in the Rose Bowl parade they had uh they showed Panthers too. And they showed uh Buffalo so- soldiers. The black uh Well remember what I told you uh last time or the time before. There is the history of uh the world and the development of human thinking written as a logo by the Royal Bank of Canada. And Royal Bank of Canada have on their logo a um, set of three letters. RBC and then there's a picture of a cat big cat lion which is the model of a panther now the story is that number two is number one. Just like seconds are the first thing spoken about in time on a clock. Seconds, why not first? Because the first is a secret. So if you imagine that There's a cave, and in that cave, number two appears to be number one, and that's a rat. What happened to number one? Well, before a rat, there was an ant, and all the ants gather up all of the information and take it where? Underground. Just 
like the Moho discontinuity provides place for the first males and first females who started gathering information and they ended up taking it underground. Neanderthalers and Amazons. So the ants are the representative of number one. They gather and hide. That's like monasteries. Gather information and hide. Then you have the rats. The rats are the original explorers. They go everywhere, just like the Portuguese. Portuguese were the sailors who went South America, China, India, all over the place in Antarctica. Port U Gies. That means if you divide the word into its component parts, the door to the geese. Well, the geese is Canada. The north. The gateway to the north. And then there are some places they can't go in a cave because there's a river that's too wide or a lake that's too wide and deep that they can't get across. So they grew wings and they became the bee, R-B. Rats become bats. And what do bats do? Bats hit a ball past the defense set up to prevent them running. And over the fence is a homer run. Home run, homer, bats the home run. Why is it that as soon as people go to university, they are taught Greek? Because the two most famous books of Homer describe the the past and the present. And they get to get over the obstacles. Well, in the old days, the obstacles were the oceans. And by putting up sails on ships, they got to travel where the rats could not go on their own until they could get a ride on a boat. And then, once the cave has been explored, you need a version of the animal that goes outside and comes back in. And that's a cat. The cat spends its nights outside and it's days sleeping inside the safety provided by the cave. And the biggest cat, tigers, lions, panthers, black panthers, mountain lions, 
they're the biggest cats. So they gather up their food and they bring it back into the cave. They eat. Just like bears carry their winter season in a deep sleep in the safety of a cave. And when you're looking at a big cat and a bear, which one looks more like Ursa Major, long tail. So although they were cats and they were going into caves, people could have mistaken them for for bears. And that may be how... Ursa Major got its name as a bear. Bear with a long tail would have been a mountain lion, a panther, fur in pants. Now, the question is, if you have a world with ants, Rats, bats, cats, and mountain lions, and no human beings. How does a human being survive? First of all, how does it get made? Well, we know that. The periodic table, the elements that make up all chemistry, can be found all over the world in different quantities. That material came from outer space. And as asteroids hit the Earth, they deposited some of these elements. Everything that's alive is a combination of these elements, a different recipe. So what happens? Every now and then, through a basic rule of... Uh, time, the right combination of elements gathers together in the right place under the right circumstances and ends up in water, pond, and out of that by chance, called evolution, the right parts, the right elements come together in the right quantities to create life in the form of a human. Maybe one in a million years. Maybe a, bi a million in a billion years, different parts of the world. So, at one stage of the game, a human baby is created. The first ones were hermaphroditic, combo of male and female in one body. But they all died 
on the shore of whatever puddle of water they came out of because they were no longer being fed. They all died, that is, until by chance a cat such as a panther or a tiger or a mountain lion, jaguar, or whatever you want to call them, having given birth and lost their baby, for whatever reason did not survive, this cat is going around looking for its baby and comes across a human child. Picks it up as cats always do and takes it home in order to nurse it So in the cave goes the mountain lion with the baby, and the baby survives long enough feeding off the cat. So in fact, cats were the first ones to have interaction with humans and brought them into their homes. That's the story written as Tarzan. An animal takes a child home, feeds it until it's able to take care of itself. You remember the movies about Tarzan. Its protector, while it was living with the chimpanzee, were the lions. So the history of humanity is written as a secret A at the beginning. Ants. The color is tan. The number is 10. So it's a journey from A to 10. One to ten, an A being number one, followed by rats, such as bureaucrats, followed by bats, such as home run, homer, education, the Iliad. followed by cats, such as the Portuguese, leaving home, ending up creating B.C., Brazil cats. Where do... Brazil cats live in the Andes. And they take the high road to Peru. Peru, the French word for road is or street is rue. R-U-E. Uh, 
have. Father, that her, a pregnant mother, makes duplicates of herself. Clones. Until at one time, the male clones meet the female clones who can't produce, for whatever reason, an offspring by themselves, but discover that through copulation, they can make genders that are no longer clones no longer attached to the same root, but can wander about on their own and make choices on their own. They are no longer attached to a tribe, but can intermarry with other tribes. And they can change their genetic makeup. And one day in the Andes and in the Himalayas and in the mountains all over the world, avalanches occur. And a number of people are instantly frozen and, quote-unquote, die. And later, whether it be months, years, or centuries, or millennia, these frozen people are discovered by people who just happen to be walking by. And if they find a location where Thousands of people were covered up in a village at the base of a mountain by an avalanche. They have thousands of samples on which to experiment, bringing them back to life. And of course, the first thing would be to melt them, only to discover that as soon as you melt them, they fade away as any dead person would. So the experiment becomes what process can be used to extract the life force that exists within the entanglement of a genome without knowing any of those words, they experiment with the thousands of bodies that they have which were frozen in an avalanche. And eventually, they start to grasp the concept. You have to do it slowly. You have to do it in a container with a watery substance. And you have to have in there 
the mix of fertilizer equal to semen. So they take cauldrons into the caves, fill them up with water, add sap from a tree in a mountainous area. They would normally be pine trees. The word pine is linked to spine. And they do it quickly down to as slow as possible. And they discover that over a period of time, the existing body disappears, leaving behind the making of a new one, who, much like the firstborn, the elements are present to make a new body the conditions are right and out of the cauldron comes a baby. Genetic engineering was born. Now the baby has to be given to a nurturer And of course, they don't want to admit that they're manufacturing these children. They say they must have been born by normal means by a parent who couldn't take care of them. So they call them foundlings from the word foundation. knowing full well that these were genetically engineered children. As the children grow into full-size adults, there's one thing that they learn about these foundlings. And that's the fact that they carry a personality that separates one from the other and that they can change the personality by changing the sap which they have added into the water in the cauldron where the child was made out of an other person. They find that the person has traits. It has the ability to do some things differently from others. And they start to realize that the trade, if you want to call it that, the approach to work that was the original person who died in the avalanche can be passed on to the child. However, the personality can be changed by the type of sap used. Most fir trees provide a sap that is pretty nasty in its taste 
and they go around looking for different trees, date trees in the Middle East would be one place where they would end up saying the personality of the people extracted from DNA out of a dead person seems to be less cantankerous. The sweeter the sap is. And they begin a search for sap that has a high level of sugar because a nice personality is much easier to control than a barbaric personality of the ones made from fir trees. And every sap of every kind of tree is taken into the laboratory for experiments. And the elm tree seems to be one that they settled on. However, it did show certain weaknesses that could, in fact, be improved with the sap of an oak tree or a chestnut tree. However, the sweetest sap of all was discovered in a maple tree. M-A for ma, A-P for pa. They had tried apple and sent Johnny Appleseed the story to America. Make a lot of apple trees and make sure everybody gets a Bible and they'll follow the rules. L-E at the end just means the in French, le. Apple, maple. What's the difference? The maple has an M, which is the symbol for breath. One last P. No penis. So the apple becomes the maple. And the maple tree sap running into water makes it the sweetest tasting water of all water, which is potable. The area of the Great Lakes has the most amount of apple trees. especially Quebec and Ontario. But a lot as well along the shores of the St. Lawrence and Lake Ontario. So now they've discovered how to make children how to change their personality through genetic engineering prior to birth, serving as amniotic fluid replacement. And then they teach 
the child using the Bible as the book of rules, all copied and modified from the book books of Enoch. that first appeared 600 years after Adam and Eve in the book. But of course, some of the books of Enoch are secret because they teach genetic engineering. and tell the reason why genetic engineering is preferable to copulation. Because everything can be pre-planned for the person who will be made And the planning can serve a program, a purpose, long term. And since there is not one thing that needs to be done, you need to make pools, gene pools. So that they have multiple approaches to solving the single problem, such as is the UN, as opposed to federal governments. All led by bureaucrats. But if you're going to make a pool, its purpose is to get from one place to the other in the big overall plan, and no one personality or multiple of personalities can carry the big plan from beginning to end without being spotted. So they have to be given a lifespan that is shorter than the time it takes to gain the knowledge of how they were really made. And yet they know that as they tweak the information, eventually... Some people will be made who will put two and two together and come up with five instead of four. Fifth dimension instead of four dimension. And therefore, when that time occurs, which will probably be a period of 8,000 years, you got to kill them en masse. So you got to have war. We have war in Syria, in Iraq, in Afghanistan. You have to have pestilence. You have Ebola, and now mosquitoes from Brazil. Pestilence. Mosquitoes. Famine in refugee camps. Disease, small heads, 
There are two heads on a male. Prevent the small head from acting and no more reproduction will come from that person. And eventually create the conditions for mass execution. The Lou at the Sioux. Of course, you need a calendar of events to tell those in the know where you're at. One event which is about to occur is the separation of the stars that make up the Big Dipper. Most of the stars there, seven of which are clearer than others, are parts of constellations rather than single stars. While one is a dual star. They all have come together by the same chance that human beings come together, although they are all separate such as elements are on Earth. And six of the stars you see are part and parcels of constellations that move in the same direction, while two stars are separate and are about to move out of the major center of activity that forms Ursa Major, therefore creating a hole in the base of Ursa Major, from which a leak begins to appear as a pinhole, invisible to most people, but as with any leak, over time will expand the hole and all of a sudden create a flood. Something has to generate the power of a wave. Such as you find being talked about these days, gravitational waves out in space when two black holes come together and merge and the shock wave made even pushes back gravity. Well, here we have a situation where the shock made will push back water from Lake of the Woods so that it will merge with Lake Superior. whose northern peninsula, Michigan, holds back the water. But a leak has begun. And as the water from Lake of the Woods enters Lake Superior, 
an explosion by superior propane. at the western end in the bottom of the bay called Thunder or Under Thunder Bay would create a hole in the bottom of the bay, but also simultaneously in the roof of caves that have been mined for thousands of years, and the water would tumble into the caves and fill it up until there is no more space, and it bounces out creating what is known as an inland tsunami, which travels at four or 500 miles an hour, the speed of a jet airplane along the bottom of Lake Superior, which is 1,200 feet under the surface, until it hits the Michigan Peninsula where the leak has become a torrent and knocks the entire peninsula over. At a height of at least 40 feet, but could be even much deeper. And all of the water from Lake of the Woods, which now allows water coming from Western sources to go straight through the Lake Superior rather than turn down the Missouri or Mississippi rivers, is added to that of the Great Lakes. It overwhelms Lake Michigan and Michigan Southern Peninsula, overwhelms Georgian Bay as it goes down the areas at Sault Ste. Marie that has the locks and dump into Gore Bay goes on land on the other side in a place called Midland and heads for Aurelia and Barry at Lake Simcoe Aurelia is where the Ontario Provincial Police have set up their headquarters, address 777. On the southern side, it floods Chicago off of Lake Michigan. And everybody runs south, not knowing that a whole canal structure from a place called Ottawa, not the capital of Canada, but a city in Illinois, carries water to the Chicago Diversion at the southern end of Chicago, where water normally now flows to the Mississippi at St. Louis. So as they run away from one flood, they're running towards another flood, getting caught in between 
takes out millions of people. Same happens to Detroit. Same thing happens to Cleveland and Toledo in Ohio. As the water runs on land in both Canada and the United States, it takes out major population centers located in Toronto, Hamilton, London, Kitchener, Waterloo, Waterloo. So Brian lives. Mm-hmm. Moving down through uh, the Trent Canal system from Lake Simcoe down to Peterborough and out around Trenton just before Kingston. The water runs into Lake Ontario. On the south side, it overwhelms the land and falls from what is Lake Michigan and Lake Huron, overwhelms Lake Erie and falls over Niagara Falls into Lake Ontario, where there's already a surplus amount of water that fills the gap opening to the St. Lawrence Seaway, and the water has no choice but to turn down on land the Fort Drum, Watertown, until it gets around the area of the St. Lawrence Seaway and runs on land. Behind Ogdensburg, leaving Ogdensburg as kind of an island off the coast of the seaway, which is jam-packed with water, and turns back down to Messina before it can re-enter the St. Lawrence at the end of the seaway. Floods Montreal to the level of Pine Street. The main street below Pine Street, since Montreal is an island with a mountain on it called Mount Royal, the base of the mountain or the lowest part of the mountain is called Pine Street. Just before you get to Pine Street, it's called Sherbrooke. A brook is also water. That means the entire lower part of Montreal Island, which includes residential areas surrounding the financial and business hub of Montreal is covered in water. Dorchester Boulevard, St. James Street is a financial district below. Beaver Hall Hill is the street that runs up the mountain from the lower parts of the financial district, suggesting dams in water and ponds. Bell Canada has their head office on Beaver Hall Hill. 1051 
Beaver Hall Hill. They have used the site that used to belong to me in Gatsunil, Paul Quebec, stealing it from me by a conspiracy with Brian Mulroney's prime ministerial office. Bribes were paid. My two partners to turn over the land that we had assembled for the creation of MICOT. My conceptual intelligent building, 145 to $165 million project. And by handing the land over to Bell Canada, my assets were diminished by $21 million. Potential assets dependent upon the opening of the MICOT project that I had assembled the land for. Water flows up the Ottawa River and the place the project was to be built is Gatsino. Gate in water. Gat in O. O E A U. Water in French. It is the home of all of the archives of Bell Canada. It is to be part of creation's revenge on the people who plan the destruction of Canada is that all of them, uh, border guards and police, will be the first to die in their own attempted mass suicide, mass murder, gene pool destruction. Hello? The genocide inflicted upon Canada.